A Miami podcast tried claiming that Toronto's a place Dame would make it ugly if he was traded there. One day later, ESPN's Mark Spears, someone with a direct connection to Dame, exposed that take from Ethan Skolnick as a lie, saying, quote, If Damian Lillard does get traded to the Raptors, he'll be a professional and will show up slash play for the team. The same podcast which gave the provably false take about Dame making it ugly if he was dealt to the six also reported that Toronto wasn't legitimately involved in offering anything up. The Portland stuff is just leveraging, and if it's not, you mean, you, then the, that's the Toronto stuff is just leveraging. You think yeah, that's what you mean? Yeah, because and, and the reason I, I it is is because like you have to know by now after what like I heard things were like red hot on Thursday and again. Oh, yeah. We we Masai all walked. Well, no, we, we heard the same thing. Back. We we heard it was we heard it was red hot. He pulled out and then Masai Masai essentially, yeah. and right? they came back. Yeah, Masai's always going to do this. He's always going to be right there, and then he's going to try yes. and like sne- and so no, I wouldn't worry about the. Well, we had we had us far we we had we had us on uh, on playback, and and it, it, the impression I got is he needs to make it look like he's doing something because they're there he yeah. hasn't really made a big transaction in a long time. The next day. MVP Mark Spears would also prove that to be a lie the very next day, saying, The hottest name that I'm hearing right now is the Toronto Raptors. Talked to two really high-ranking team executives, and they said Toronto is the frontrunner. More lies debunked on the way. 83% of you watching right now, though, are not subscribed, so help that percentage get lower by splashing the sub box. Hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Appreciate your support. Back to the vid. Miami sources would then try to question why Toronto would even trade for Dame in the first place, assumably in an attempt to scare the Raptors' front office away, so the Heat could regain their place as frontrunners for Dame. Christian Hernandez of the Miami Heat Beat podcast would tweet out the following, Raptors going all in on Dame and not being a top two team in the East would be really funny, especially if it results in the Heat getting Giannis. East competitor takes themselves out by overbidding and the Heat end up with a better player. I still doubt Masai is that foolish. Another Heat fan would tweet out, I don't see the Raptors being a top four team in the East, even if they land Dame. On top of that, one of the most followed Houston Rockets accounts would give their take on Toronto acquiring Dame, saying, Just want to say that Damian Lillard, Pascal Siakam, and OG Ananobi is a second round exit in the Eastern Conference at best. If I'm a Raptors fan, not only do I not want to trade for Dame, I want to instead trade OG and Pascal for young players and picks and hit a rebuild. It's interesting that two opposing fan bases are so persistent on stating the Raptors wouldn't be a top two team in the East with Dame. It's not like a deal has even been completed yet, so it feels like those tweets were an attempt to lure Toronto away from getting back into the mix as contenders. Everyone knows the Raptors have the assets to get a deal done, but seem afraid of them pulling the trigger. Most frustratingly, Even their own media doesn't want a team who won 48 games just a year ago to trade for a superstar. Michael Grange of Sportsnet said in his recent article, quote, Should Toronto make the trade? I don't think so, though I don't get a vote. It's hard to see the Raptors becoming a contender with Lillard on the roster. This is a 41-win team with suspect depth to begin with, not the loaded 59-win team that ran 11 deep that Leonard took over the top in 2018-19. End quote. Worse yet, a Toronto radio station apparently said on air, Siakam not good enough to be a number two, and if you get Dame, you'll be just as good as Lowry and DeRozan. Also, Sam Mitchell of TSN apparently went on a radio station to spew the typical rant about the cold weather in Toronto and nobody wanting to play here. To respond to the Grange take about this being a team with suspect depth, bringing in Dame would move Dennis Schroeder to the bench. Additionally, Masai picked up a 25-year-old wing who was a rotation piece for a team that made the second round last year in Jalen McDaniels. Let's assume you hang on to Chris Boucher. Boosh is only two years removed from posting a 14.7 rebound and two block per game season on around 40% three-point shooting. Don't forget a championship wing piece next to Stephen Curry could help Dame out in Otto Porter Jr. Automatic was limited to just 8 games last year, but is expected to be healthy in 23-24, and could be in for a bounce-back season. Dismissing the upside of Christian Coloco at center would also be a mistake. If a deal for Dame is centered around, say, Ananobi, Grady, Achua, Young, and Picks, that means you'll hang on to Gary Trent Jr. With a top point guard leading the charge, Toronto would have a scrappy spot-up marksman next to him in the backcourt with GTJ, 
a potential breakout player in Barnes, an all-NBA player who'd step back into the number two option role he had during the Raptors' title run being Siakam, and a player they went 15-11 and 11 with in 22-23 in Jakob Pertl, manning the front court. Then off the pine, an elite backup point guard in Dennis, Otto as a backup 2-3, McDaniels locking down the wing off the bench as a backup 3-4, and Boucher plus Coloco filling out the backup 4 and 5 spots. You'd also have Malachi Flynn, Jeff Doughton Jr., and Marquise Noel, capable of racking up minutes in the backcourt off the bench. Depth is anything but the Raptors' issue, and those who were completely fine with how this team's top players performed under pressure in 22-23 weren't paying attention. Toronto is very much in need of star power and a clear franchise direction, acquiring Dame gives them both of those things. Sadly, there's been a lot more disrespect than we've already covered. Heat fans have been acting like OG Ananobi being on an expiring deal ruins his value, when in opposition to that, Ananobi's contract ending in 2024 would allow Portland to flip both OG and Nurkic to Phoenix in exchange for DeAndre Ayton. If they prefer to keep OG, Portland would own his bird rights once he hit free agency, allowing them to offer more money than any other team to help them re-sign one of the best defenders and 3 and D guys in the NBA. Therefore, Heat fans trying to make Hero resemble the far and away better asset than Ananobi, when OG's more tradable, his defense is significantly better, and he shot a higher percentage from both the field and from deep last year, are showing their bias. Speaking of doing that, Stephen A. Smith has been most afraid of Dame getting traded to the six, given he's making up lies about the Raptors being on the same level as Portland. Smith would say, quote, Dame wants to be in a position where he can compete for a championship. If Toronto is an option, why not stay the hell in Portland? It's a waste of time to even think about going to the Toronto Raptors, end quote. In addition to the lies about Toronto in terms of the Dame trade, the disrespect in general towards the Raps continues to rein in. According to ESPN's Tim Bontemps, a poll of 15 executives, scouts, and coaches voted Toronto had the worst offseason of any team. As written by Bleacher Report, quote, The Raptors' biggest addition was Dennis Schroeder, who isn't exactly a difference maker. End quote. I mean, the amount of angles being played here from both the media and team-employed personnel across the league are impressive. One hater standpoint features the deniers of the Raptors' involvement. Another hating group says that Toronto wouldn't get better even if they traded for Dame in an attempt to scare them off. Others are trying to pressure Toronto into a deal by stating they had the worst offseason in hopes they'll make a desperate move and give up too much. Either way, there's an insane, unfair amount of disrespect geared towards the Six right now. I haven't even mentioned the minute-long rant from NBA YouTuber Young Mustard, which says this about Pascal Siakam. Then you got Siakam. He is the sloppiest star in the NBA. That guy is gross. That rant from my fellow NBA YouTuber is based around Toronto fans being the most delusional in the NBA, as this man's trying to sue us for showing belief in our players. But there's one thing us Raptor fans provably aren't delusional about, however, and that's having a ring. <laughs> And sure, maybe we're a fan base that's just lost its mind given literally every year since the Kawhi trade in 2018. The Raptors have been rumored to be trading for a superstar, but have gotten their hopes up every single time with their front office pulling out. The Raptor front office shouldn't forget or stop taking seriously the fact that Kawhi was holding the Larry O'Brien trophy the last time they made a deal for a disgruntled superstar. Let me know your thoughts on the Dame trade drama down below. This has been DFlow Hoops, and peace.